Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where you'll hear stories about people who believe that they deserve more than others just for being their cute little self and existing. Just existing. Guys, before we dive into the stories today, take a look at this. Went to Walmart to get lunch meat and items for the week. As I went to pay, the lady in front of me did not have enough money to pay for groceries, so I told the cashier that I would pay her balance. The lady customer thanked me and asked if she could pick some other items up that she needed, since I was paying for them. I told her sorry, I was in a hurry, and that's why I paid for her things and mine. She got mad at me and said, I see how you people are. Oh my god. Goodness. Guys, you give somebody an inch and they take a mile, right? She totally should have just stopped after thanking OP and should have just been grateful for the deed. But nope. She had to get mad and say, Oh, I see how you people are. Who the heck are the you people she's talking about, guys? I'm so upset for OP because he wanted to do a good deed and was instead given a super greedy response. Guys, if you think that's entitled, wait until you hear the stories in this episode. Get ready to shake your heads even more. With that said, let's dive into the stories and do hit that subscribe button, guys, for future stories, my friends. So, a bit of backstory. I work at a pretty big pretzel company, but for privacy reasons, I will call it Uncle Uns. Anyway, I worked there for a year already, and this happened to be pretty early in my second. This particular pretzel place was inside a small amusement park. So the story... This story takes place 5 minutes after my shift ends, so I'm tired and I just want to go home. We were busy cleaning and not paying attention to the window, because normally most families would have left by this point. Then, we hear a knock on our window. Since I'm the cashier, I walk up to the window and say the line that I always say. Hi, how can I help you today? The entitled woman said, Yeah, are, are you guys closed? I told her we closed 5 minutes ago, and she said, Great, do you have any leftover pretzels? I told her yeah we do, and she asked if she could have them. I asked her how many she would like, and she told me five. I then said, alright, that comes to $21.15, since it's $4.23 a pretzel. And she says, what? Aren't they discounted? I told her if she has a season pass, it's 15% off. And she said, no, you're closed, so the pretzels should be half off. Me, wanting to go home and stop caring said, and, and why do you think that? She said, you're closed, so that means the pretzels are a day old and should be discounted. For the record, we switch out our pretzels every 30 minutes, and I told her those pretzels are only 30 minutes old. And she replied, fine, so I can get 15% off, right? If you have a season pass, yes. The entitled woman responds, no, I should get 15% off because you're closed. Ma'am, no. As you stated, we're closed, so we are no longer selling pretzels. I'm only offering them to you because my boss wants as many sold as possible. And she says, See? You can't sell them. They're probably gonna go bad the next day and you'll have to throw them out anyway. They should be free. I told her no, they're not. Just a note here, we don't throw out food. I'll just usually take the leftovers home and eat them for my dinner. She replied, You're throwing them away anyways. My kids are hungry. Then buy them some food. She starts screaming something that nobody but dogs could understand and leaves. I know this story is not as interesting as some of the others, but I just had to post this. Guys, I know for a fact this happens so, so much in the fast food industry. So, if you guys have been listening to me for a while, you'll know that I used to work at Quiznos Sub, years and years ago. I can't tell you all the countless people that came in right at 9pm when we closed, and literally said that we should give them leftover food for free because they know how much food is wasted in fast food stores. I don't really know what these people were thinking that we were throwing out though, because subs at Quiznos were made as ordered, and we rarely threw any food away after shift. We never did give any food to anybody for free. Five years ago, my husband and I bought a house. We had been saving for years for the down payment, and the stars must have aligned for us to get it. Everything worked out perfectly. The house was a major fixer-upper, but it had land, and we were happy with that. So, it turns out, my brother-in-law had looked at the house when it was listed as well. They decided it was too much work to fix it up, and not worth it. They wanted major upgrades too, whereas my husband and I were very simple people. We don't need granite countertops, or a soaking tub, or hardwood floors, etc. We met up with the family recently, and brother-in-law was talking about how cramped their condo has become with two kids now. 
he decided that it was time to tell us that we should trade houses. I kid you not, my brother-in-law is very, very entitled. My brother-in-law proceeded to argue that we are only two people and their family is growing and could use the space. He literally suggested that we give ours to him and buy out his condo. I laughed. I knew he was serious, but I couldn't help but laugh. I have never in my life imagined that someone could be so damn entitled that they demand someone give up their home for the sake of another family. Are you kidding me? Brother-in-law then got mad at me for not even considering it and began justifying all the reasons his family needed our house more. Oh, you think this would be the worst part, right? <laughs> no, it gets even better. So we have never finished the basement, so there's only one bathroom in the house. My brother-in-law informed me that if we were to trade houses that we would need to make some major upgrades first, because he would not have the time to be able to make any major renovations. He was somehow inexplicably certain that I would see the logic in his plan and just trade houses with them, because they needed the extra space so much more. And now, my brother-in-law isn't even talking to me, because I laughed through the whole thing and would not take him seriously. It's a win-win. Go ahead, punish me by not talking to me. At least then you'll stop trying to make me the bad guy and tell everybody how horrible I am, because I wouldn't buy out your condo at market value while giving you our house out of the goodness of our hearts. Last I know, he was now trying to tell my father-in-law to retire and move to the city so that he could have the farm. Joke's on him though, father-in-law has already talked about it and has left the farm to me and my husband in his will, because we actually farm and brother-in-law thinks it's too much work. I've always thought the internet exaggerated that people like this exist, and I thought situations like this could never possibly be real. What the hell are these people thinking? Hold on, did OP really say that the brother-in-law wanted to sell his place to her, and in return, she just gives him their house? <laughs> oh, how about you just give me your house, and in return you buy mine, so I can make some money off of it. That's some crazy entitlement. <laughs> Guys, so I've been reading a lot of entitled stories about family members wanting other family members' houses. <laughs> There's just too many. So let me know if you guys have ever been in this situation, or know of somebody who has. Okay, so I work at a large chain pizza place, but in a smaller town that nobody really knows exists. Only carry out and delivery. Now, for this story to make sense, the store has a landlord, but also, my boss is considered the owner of the store, even though it's a chain restaurant. Two different people though, that own this building. So, this Karen comes in one morning, while I'm the manager on my shift, and the only other person there is my delivery driver. The driver is a 20 year old male, and I'm a 24 year old female, but honestly, I look very young. This was like last month, so we aren't allowed to have customers come indoors. We walk to their car. So I very politely inform Karen that she can't come indoors, and I'll be more than happy to assist her at her car. Karen says, That won't be necessary, I'm allowed in here. I said, Um, no ma'am, we're not allowed to have any customers indoors because of the restrictions. We could get temporarily shut down if so. Karen then says, My husband is the owner, just take my order. Now, the landlord is not married. He comes around a lot, and he's very young, like my age. And my boss is married to the absolute sweetest person I've ever known, and they both live an hour away in a different state. Karen's like in her mid-40s, and definitely not the sweet woman I've met and known for years. I said, Ma'am, I'm very sorry, but you're not married to the owner. I'm gonna need you to step outside of the store, and I'll be more than happy to assist you outside. Karen says, Excuse me? I can get you fired, you know. I told her I hope she does, but I still need you to step outside of the store so I can take your order. Karen responds, I will not take this treatment. I'll call the owner and get you fired. I told her okay, while she does that, I'm gonna call the actual owner so he can tell her to step outside of the store. Karen grabs her phone and starts calling someone. I call my boss and explain the situation. While I'm talking, Karen interrupts me to say, yeah. He says you're fired. You're too young to be working here anyway, so I don't know why he hired a child to work, but you don't work here anymore. My boss overhears this and starts laughing and asks to be put on speakerphone. He says, ma'am, I'm the owner of the store and I would never allow my wife, who's sitting next to me, to come into the store during the pandemic. It's a violation of current health laws and we have the right to call authorities if necessary. Please step outside the door. Karen is screeching that she's married to the building owner the landlord. 
but calls him by the wrong name. My boss starts laughing again because the landlord has no control over the actual store. He just owns the building and we pay him rent. The landlord is also currently right outside working on the roof. So at this point, I say, Oh, I didn't know the landlord got married. I'll go congratulate him. Come on, let's go. So I walk outside and Karen is following me, mumbling something. I said, Hey landlord, do you mind coming down here for a second? Karen looks absolutely mortified at this point. She definitely messed up and she knows it. But no, I'm gonna keep rolling with this. At this point, the landlord comes down from the ladder, confused as hell. Hey landlord, your new wife here says you just fired me and that she's allowed indoors. Now, I didn't know you got married, I'm so happy for you. So long story short, Karen is embarrassed and told to get off the property before police are called. She mumbles something I still can't understand and then says, I can't believe a dumb teenager is doing this to me, and turns to go to her car. Now Karen just calls to ask for delivery, which I will happily do. And I still laugh about it all the time. Oh my goodness. To think this whole situation could have been avoided if she just stepped outside and had her order taken there. Guys, why do Karens make things so hard for themselves sometimes? I still don't understand what the heck she was thinking though. If you're not married to the owner, don't say that you are. I'm a 24-year-old female working in Osaka, Japan. Naoko, a work friend, invited me to the Universal Studios Japan. I agreed, because Universal Studios Japan has owls. Live, adorable, real owls at their Harry Potter adventure, which the United States does not have. Naoko is nervous to go see them because she does not like big birds, but I want to go, so I'm asking her nicely to come with or to wait for me to see them. While we were discussing this, someone taps me on the shoulder. I turn around and see a well-dressed mother and her 11-year-old daughter. They look pretty normal. The mother, Karen, is wearing a Harry Potter shirt and looking lost. Her daughter is begging to go on a ride. Karen pulls out a map and says, Hey, do you speak English? I can't figure out where this ride is. I point in the general direction where we came from, and I tell her, I do, we just came from that ride over there. Karen taps the map with a perfectly manicured talon and said, But where specifically? Nayoko pops in, because she's the most helpful person in the world. That's not sarcastic, she's wonderful. She asked, do you have a pen? And she mimes drawing on the map. She jerks the sacred map to her chest and she tells me, Do not touch our map. Just take us there. Now, I can see how annoyed Karen is getting. I'm thankful that Karen has made Naoko more interested in seeing the majestic sky cats. Anything, I think, is better than being around Karen. So I tell Karen that unfortunately they have left the building and will not return this season due to budget cuts in the account. I tell her as politely as I can, We're gonna go see the owls. Just ask one of the workers. We found a couple of people who speak really good English. Naoko and I are off to see the wizard, and Karen says loudly, Just take us to the ride. I told her no, we have to go now, and Karen says, My daughter is gonna be really upset if we don't get to the ride before closing. I told her to talk to an employee because I'm not a tour guide. And Karen says, But you're American, you should help me. Americans should help each other. I told her no thanks and to have a nice day. Karen then turns to her daughter and tells her that I'm not going to show them where the ride is, so they won't be able to do it before daddy finds them, and that I ruined their day. This 11-year-old girl proceeds to fall onto the ground and starts sobbing. So this girl is throwing an absolute silent fit, pounding on the ground with her hands, all while not making any noise. Naoko and I decide that we're going to leave. Karen's just standing there while we leave, telling her daughter that we ruined the day. Instead of, you know, asking the super bilingual employees. Oh, silly Karen. OP did not ruin the day. You did. And that, my friends, is another episode of r slash Entitled People. Guys, if you enjoyed the episode today and you aren't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button. If you want to hear more Entitled People stories, check out the last one I did if you missed it. A Karen smacks OP in a store because she thought he was ignoring her. And he's actually deaf. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> guys, check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.